So the other day, a video was sent to me from a channel, from a YouTuber, pianist, Anna Komishko, hope I pronounce her name correct. She also commented uh, a few times in the past on our channel, very positively so. Um, that's not the reason why I make this video, but she apparently uploaded a video that the video that was sent to me uh, with a very specific or telling title the dark side of being a concert pianist i'm going to share some fragments from this video and i can encourage you to uh, go to her channel and check the entire 18 minute video because it's a kind of pessimistic negative view um and I wouldn't say even negative in the sense that she is actually being honest on what she experiences and what she feels. And um, in, a, in a, her current position as a concert pianist, trained to be a concert pianist at least, and the things that she says might be depressive at first if you hear them. I have some other points that I want, would like to add at the end before you go and say like, hey, this is just because it's a loser and you see, it's, a, it's only for the best and, and, and spare me the nonsense, this condescending behavior. These people they are all trained to perform on stage in exactly the way that the system requires them to do and they have basically no future and if you say this is just one voice no she's very brave to make that video it's unbelievable that a pianist a musician that wants to make her way in the academic or a musical system as we have today stands up and say enough is enough i'm going to share some fragments she speaks about a lot of things like for instance why some pianists get paid 50 euros and others paid 50 000 euros for a concert and she says like maybe the difference is there and probably the 50 000 pianist is somewhere on a level that is really high but the 50 uh, pianist, 50 euro pianist is also very high so the difference is definitely not um, one to a thousand things like that and then she starts talking about uh, music universities that do not prepare actually students or their students for real life I'm going to share this as a first fragment is that many musicians who are trained to perform, who finished a few music universities, they end up working in a music school. Of course, nothing is wrong with working in a music school, but the problem is that it's a completely different profession from what one studied and dreamed about. It doesn't really have to do anything with performing. And it's great if one enjoys doing it but many musicians don't and um, yes many young musicians when realizing what is actually their reality going to be till the rest of their life get very frustrated um, depressed and unfortunately our education does not prepare us for that for this reality i'm going to comment on that um, in a few minutes so what i just want to share another fragment the very last problem that I'm going to talk today about, I mean, there are lots of problems, but I think it's enough for today. Uh, and this is a problem that is especially important for me because I do lots of social media. And it's like, it's very difficult to reach a big audience with classical music online. I mean, it... it, it it can be sometimes very frustrating to prepare a video for hours and days and put your soul into it and all your knowledge, for example. Um, and then there are like two, three hundred uh, people watching it while thousands, if not millions, are watching videos about makeup, video games and whatever else. I mean, nothing wrong with that, of course. But somehow you also want, you just want more people there for the culture, for classical music. And it's just frustrating sometimes. 
So again, before someone jumps on, uh, uh, you know, in the comment section, say like, she's just frustrated and uh, just do your best a little bit. It's a meritocracy. If you do your best, everything comes from. No, I know firsthand how hard it is to build a YouTube channel. And it's what what Anna is doing is actually what every musician should be doing, like build your presence on presence online. But there is something to it. Uh, the, just the two points that she made with the conservatories, with the universities and with social media, both are connected. First, universities. I wouldn't go that far that every conservatory or university is not preparing their students for their later lives. It's true. For instance, in, um, if, I'm, if I'm speaking in my own, from my own experience when I was in Amsterdam, uh, the first degree you had, now it's all changed with bachelor and master's, but it's actually a stupid replacement because the first de first term that you had, the first diploma, was uh, what I call in Dutch docerent musicus, so it's teaching musician. And I, I, you, you had to teach during your time in conservatories. Uh, conservatory. Uh, what is definitely true, however, is that you were not prepared for your life as a musician. There was no one saying to you at the beginning of the conservatory, listen, um, and of course, when you enter the conservatory, Amsterdam was big name in organ and early music. So we, you came, you come there and you're like, I'm accepted in Amsterdam. And so I'm the guy, I'm the musician. And so nobody really is telling you like, listen, the world outside is these walls and it's not waiting for you. There are a lot of good musicians and it's definitely true with many major conservatories that they give the impression to pref at least that you belong to a certain elite. And when you then leave the conservatory walls, I mean, come in the outside, in the open, you, 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 there is very little but teaching that's waiting for you. And, Connected to her point at the end, it's hard to build an online presence, it's hard to build an audience. I would say it's hard for classical music in general. I don't hear a lot of very, very positive signs, like concert halls, they fill up like nothing. Um, the point is, we live today in a musical society that's heavily controlled by some gatekeepers. You see it in the work that we do. If we make a video on the Hammerklavier Sonata, guess who's trying to keep us from going further? People don't want change. The big names in the music industry, if I may call it like that, they don't want any change because it reflects on their reputation. If you do something different in terms of performance practice, that might negatively influence the way they, uh, their audience sees their authority. In a conservatory where normally, I would say, it's kind of like university light, where your teacher should stimulate you to be critical and to be very critical also to your, to your teachers and find your own way instead of creating like um, copy pastes of the teachers of the system of people that, you know, play today. Instead, you are forced to play exactly as your a uh, colleague student as a generation before you, as a generation before you, and if anything, you can play a little bit faster, but that's it. You don't ask questions. Go and don't say to me like, Wim, you're exaggerating. That's not true. It is damn well true. I had a teacher in Amsterdam and the organ class that I could ask anything to. And when he didn't know, he said, I don't know, but that's a very rare exception. And it's only possible because it's in the organ world. And so what you end up with is a musical landscape where everybody plays the same. And if you don't play the same, do not enter a, co a competition, don't apply for concerts because who's going to take the risk to hire some, somebody who plays different than, than let's say Andras Schiff or one of those top players? We have created a landscape in our musical world where diversity is something that we don't want anymore. Like in the 60s, the, the, just think about this. The, the economical boom of music 
of the early music movement in the 60s and certainly the 70s was organized by the big labels. They still had money and they saw like these people are doing something different. They didn't care about the background. They didn't care about the how well they are informed or not. They just did something different and there were a bunch of enthusiastic players and they these labels presented them with a platform that created an economical boom in the music uh, business that is unthinkable today. And what do we do now? I would say certainly in the historically informed performance practice, don't play any slower than we because that's flat earth. I mean, it are of course some idiots, some trolls and some maybe people that shouldn't do that on the internet that I'm talking about now. But you, if you think that the, that the high level persons like the scholars and the top performing artists uh, wouldn't support that, you're wrong. Those are the gatekeepers and the people that we see here on the internet reach out to me to say what kind of idiot I am are just little puppets doing their work. And that's why, I mean, not digressing on, on myself here, but can you imagine you going to a concert in Carnegie Hall and you come here in Brussels in Bozar and then you go in Amsterdam Concertgebouw and then you go elsewhere and you hear Beethoven Fifth Symphony and played exactly in the same way all the time. I hear so many of my friends, some of which are really high patrons in like very high sit, um, positions, to say like, oh, tonight again, Brahms Concerto. Again, I have to go like Beethoven Fifth Symphony. I'm so tired of that music. Can you imagine this? And imagine a world where someone like Anna, I don't know what her intention is with music, but just plays and finds her own way, escapes from this like paved way, like this is the way how we play. Diversify again what we are doing. If, if I would be living in the 70s, I mean, we would be like big business. Huh? Now today I have to find, I have to fight against a system that wants just want to block it. And I get it. What we are doing is kind of totally out of the system. But to her point, whatever way she wants to make, I would, I don't think that when, when she would do like something very different, that it would be accepted. And then concert organizations, what do you think they do? It's just a matter of, um, you know, uh, of demand and supply. When you have 50,000 pianists who can play exactly Rachmaninoff 3 as you want and you only have 10 concerts, guess what happens? You will pay 50 euros for a maybe lower level concert. And you will get high quality because that young guy or girl thinks like, yes, finally the opportunity. But you don't realize there are 49,999 people waiting for you to replace you the moment you ask for something more. And the 10 or 20 names that we all know that play for 20 or 50k a concert, they fill the concert halls because of course the audience comes for them, not for the music, but for to see the face live. It's like, this guy was on television and now he's on stage. And I'm not saying when Andras Schiff, just naming his name, when he plays run the first note on stage, the, the whole of 2000 people is silent. We may not agree on the way of the, of, or, or the performance practice and the explanation behind it. And again, I will come back to that. But that's, that's totally irrelevant. When he plays one note, the entire hall is just there with him. So in a way, he deserves to be where he is. It never happens by accident, but those chances today for young people. And I would say, let's embrace diversity. Let's, let's educate an audience again, because that's what musicians, what organizations have to do. You have to take a position and in time the audience will follow and they will see like, listen, what this, that pianist does it like that. That pianist does it like that. He plays on this instrument. He plays on that instrument. That's the explanation for the interpretation of this one. And then so you get a complete diversified landscape, which will lead again to more opportunities. So it's something we need to reflect upon. There are more opportunities. Build your online presence is very hard, guys. I know that. I mean, I don't know. I'm looking at her channel. She has 1.8, uh, so 1.8k, so almost 2,000 subscribers. You would say, like, that's a small channel. I mean, try it, huh? Some people even said to me, like, this guy with this theory and only a small audience of 40,000 subscribers. Can you imagine how hard, how hard you have to work for that? 
And the truth is that when you come up with real content, like here guys, I'm going to explain you in depth why what we propose is true, then nobody watches. Of course not. But when I put my sunglasses on and respond to Valentina Lizitsa's like uncomprehensible comment, there are 350 people waiting in the premiere. There are 100,000 people watching a video in one week. But when I talk about the real explanation of the Melson's instructions of 1816, wow, who cares? I mean, that's the game also you need to play on YouTube. So I support 100% what Anna was doing, and I just have to congratulate her with, uh, with standing up and making her case. And my only advice would be, be yourself, go your own path, do crazy stuff, and develop your own brand in a way that when it costs you concert, concerts, don't even pay attention to that and listen to the people who support you. You have 1,800 subscribers. That, does, that are 1,800 people who so value in the work that you do. And you shouldn't feel ashamed for that. Go for it. Don't listen to the people who say it's only that. You have 1,800 people following you or at least at some moment so value in what you were doing. Go after them, uh, bring them around you, create a community, provide value for them, because I believe that's the future. This individual contact that YouTube provides us and other social media as well, from one person, creator, musician, whatever, to another. You just have to find out what the value is that you provide. And it's more than you think. So congrats for this video. I hope that more and more musicians speak out. And it's not about being frustrated. It's just about reality of life. And if we can support each other in this, I'm more than happy to do so. So if you're still here, go to her channel, subscribe, say hello from our community. And... Um, Maybe we can give her channel a little bit of a boost. Okay, guys, that was it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe also to this channel. Go to Patreon and see if it's something for you, supporting us in the work that we do, build our movement here, also writing the book, which I'm finishing the manuscript in the coming weeks. Um, promise that, it's true, maybe month. And if you do all of that, we see each other very soon again. Bye.